some of the things that a person should look for when they want to hire someone to do computer or cellular forensics is find out what their background is. Just taking a few courses is not enough. Unfortunately, a lot of these courses that are being given now are vendor driven. And so they're two or three days and they're another revenue stream for the vendor. What is their background before the courses they took? Did they have an interest in this? Did they dabble in computers? I always tell the joke, were they coding in their grandmother's basement on a Friday night when they were younger? Those are the people you want to find. As far as cellular forensics and, and computer forensics blurring and crossing over, what I do see is a number of companies uh, advertising that they do both. But the fact of the matter is that the two types of forensics are entirely different. They're an entirely different set of tools that are used, entirely different technology and operating systems. And so although the line is blurring somewhat, it's only because some companies don't understand these differences. The two are separate sets of data forensics. Some of the examples of where we would use computer forensics and, and cell phone forensics uh, really run the gamut. If a computer is used during that crime or suspected to be used during that crime or that tort for, for that matter, uh, then it needs to be looked at. As an example, uh, any type of criminal case, uh, especially with, with drug dealers and people you know, committing crimes, everybody's got a cell phone, they're texting back and forth with their, their cohorts. On the computer side of the fence, it can be theft of intellectual property, theft of trade secrets, uh, possession of child pornography. Again, a capital murder cases, somebody has maybe gone online before the crime was committed to see how to commit the perfect murder or how to kill someone or how to dispose of a body. Uh, it's just the sky is the limit for the types of cases that a computer can be analyzed. We've done them in stock mani manipulation cases, uh, corporate value cases. Uh, Companies are given money by, uh, by uh, you know, silent corporations, uh, investment funds, and they lose the money. Or the market starts to go down, so they take the money and run. Well, the investment company wants to know where the money went, so we'll go into the computer and try to follow the trail. To walk through the process of how we would interact with someone who's calling about a cellular forensics case, the first thing we would ask is, is what, what are they after? What do they suspect has happened? Once they tell us that, we know how to approach the investigation better. Now it comes down to what type of a device is it? Because unlike computer forensics, where a device is nothing more than a storage container for data, cell phones are different by make and model to the data they will hold, to what happens to deleted data. So we need to be able to define that to give the client an objective idea of what is even possible. So once we know the make and model of the device, the next thing is, is it password protected? Do you know the password? One of the most important questions, do you have legal access to this phone? If it belongs to someone else who is not your minor child on your account, you can't look at the stuff on that phone without a subpoena. Uh, same with your spouse. If your spouse is on a separate account, you can't go looking at your spouse's phone just because you feel like it. The most valuable piece of data that can be extracted from a cell phone is somewhat subjective depending on the device. But for example, on an iPhone, we can pull a file off of the iPhone that shows all the historical text messages even if they've been deleted by the user. Well, I think one of the most important pieces of data that can be extracted from a phone that people don't realize or investigators don't realize is GPS data. We can, depending on the make and model of the phone, we can extract evidence that will show where the phone has been in the life of the phone what, even when it's not making a call, it just needs to be on because as you travel with the phone, it's talking to the cell towers and depending on the make and model, it's cataloging that information. It's the wild west out there right now in the computer forensics industry and many, many people are hanging out a shingle just because they can afford a piece of software. It behooves any client to really rigorously inspect a prospective forensic examiner's qualifications.